Hello AP Calculus, I've got a new video for you. It's all over computational continuity. So you guys saw how the graphs yield the different continuity values, the idea that, um, I can just go off to the side and explain this really quick. If you had asymptotes, where the curves would splinter off this way, or even asymptotes where curves would go in the same direction. We would consider those to be non-removable discontinuities. If you had graph breaks, situations like this where you had a function that was on a very fluid path and then it just stops, jumps down, and then moves forward, okay? And maybe I should call this not just a graph break, but a jump break. That was also a non-removable discontinuity. And then we had ones in which they just, they were, they were just holes in the graph. And I know this is a hole right here, but I'm talking about where the graph is just moving continuously, stops, there's a hole there, but then it just kind of picks up and keeps on moving. That, as well as a situation where maybe it was moving, stopped, another point was plotted somewhere else and it moved forward, these situations are actually called removable discontinuities. So you guys saw that in the video. Uh, over the ones with the gr uh, computing graphics, computing limits graphically, you guys, I'm pretty sure, already knew all that stuff. Now, when we're talking about functions, especially rational ones with fractions, we have to start thinking in terms of there are both asymptotes and holes in the graph that could potentially cause domain issues. It's not just one or the other. Sometimes both exist in the same function. So we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at functions like that. Yeah, and I gave a little little description up here just to remind ourselves that hey, if you're describing continuity, we're talking removable versus non-removable, non and really just thinking about the domain issues of functions oftentimes inform us on what the actual uh, continuity issues are too. So trig functions, a lot of times they have domain issues. Even roots, you got to be greater than or equal to zero, so that would be a continuity issue as well. Functions with asymptotes or graph breaks, functions with fractions are oftentimes the ones that pose the most continuity issues. So let's jump into the examples. Number one, you got 4 minus x squared over x squared plus, plus x minus 2. We have domain issues on the bottom equaling 0. And I'm going to factor the top out as well. The top gives us a difference of squares of 2 minus x times 2 plus x. The bottom is pretty simple factoring. It ends up being x plus 2 times x minus 1. The x plus 2's cancel. That's important. It's important to note that the domain issue x plus 2 couldn't equal 0 was canceled out from the top. Because what that means is a canceled divided out factor is a removable discontinuity. Because, because it was a domain issue that was divided out from a factor on top. That's what creates holes in graphs. So, this means that we have a removable discontinuity at, this is kind of a shorthand way of talking about it, x equals negative 2. Because that's the solution to this equation right here. Now, what do we do with the rest of this? Well, there's still an x minus 1 on the bottom, 
Because it wasn't canceled out, we can assume that it's an asymptote on the bottom. So it's one of those little dashed lines where we're going to be approaching some infinity from the left and from the right. So I'll put it over here. X minus 1 equals 0 is a non-removable discontinuity. since it did not divide itself out. So that's going to be, in shorthand, non-removable discontinuity at x equals 1. So this would be an adequate description of your continuity. Some people think mistakenly that 2 minus x it has some, something to do with the continuity. 2 minus x on the top, if we set that equal to 0, will only give us the spots where our curve crosses the x-axis. It's just a zero. Try number two on your own. So pause it. All right, unpause. Let's see what we got here. So the top, everybody's got an X. I'm going to factor it out. On the bottom, everybody's got an X, so I'm going to factor that out. The top is pretty simple quadratic to factor x minus 3 x minus 1 so these are the factored versions of the polynomial that exists on the top and the polynomial that exists on the bottom we can cancel out this x and this x we can cancel out this x minus 1 and that x minus 1, which means there are going to be two holes in this graph. So at x equals 0 and at x minus 1 equals 0, there are holes, which means we have a removable discontinuity at x equals 0. and a removable discontinuity at x equals 1. There are no non-removable discontinuities of this function because there's nothing left on the bottom x-wise to, to give us sort of like this divide by 0 error. In fact, what we've just discovered is that this original rational function is actually a linear function. This is, this is basically following the linear pattern of x minus 3, except there are holes in that line at x equals 0 and x equals 1. Interesting stuff. Checking a few more of these out. Can you guys see this one? Let's get back to it. So h of x over here, uh, you got two separate fractions that don't have common denominators. Um, in your math experience, you've kind of been trained to say, find common denominators and make one fraction. But that's actually totally unnecessary when you're trying to determine what the domain issues are. The domain issues are basically just where the bottoms equal 0. So this bottom equals 0. And that bottom equals 0. You can't divide them out by finding common denominators. See, so solve these using good old-fashioned algebra. And you probably, you guys probably don't even need to show this work. Early math 1 stuff. So these are the places where technically, yeah, it can't equal zero because those would be domain issues. So the question is, are they holes or are they asymptotes? Well, we didn't divide them out, so they're asymptotes, which means they're non-removable discontinuities at x equals negative 5 and x equals 3 sevenths. 
All right, now in the textbook, there's a nice theorem about polynomials that basically state if I got a polynomial, it's a polynomial function is continuous. There's a polynomial, which means it's continuous everywhere. No removable or non removable discontinuities at all. If you encounter that situation, you just say it's continuous everywhere. So some other functions that have, uh, like, I'd, I'd say pristine continuities are the ones that don't have problems with the domain. So odd roots don't have any domain issues normally. Um, absolute value functions that don't have a rational component to them. There's no, there's no fraction with variables on the bottom. Absolute value functions are also continuous everywhere. I'm going to talk about trig in a bit, but there's a couple trig functions that are continuous everywhere as well. Piecewise functions. Okay. We got three of them here. And this is probably a good place to talk about the definition of what it means to be continuous. And it's a three pronged approach. And I think it's probably not a bad idea to talk about the actual textbook definition that exists in section 2.5. So if you guys go to page 80, what was it? 78. 78 in the textbook states, a function f is continuous at a number c if the following conditions are satisfied. So basically it has to have these three things. So first of all, like instead of f of x, let's just say f of c is defined. It would be undefined if there was a hole in the graph where there's no like corresponding point either vertically above it or vertically below it. Yeah, so it has to be defined at that spot. It can't be an asymptote either without like a point that's sort of like connecting things. So. There's our first bullet point. Our second bullet point is that the limit as x approaches c must exist. And here's the thing. We have to almost look at this as sort of like a code saying, hey, what does it mean for a limit to exist? It means that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side approach. So it's almost like saying, hey, your limit from the left of c of f of x must equal the limit as x approaches c from the right. All right, And really, I should be putting f of x here and f of x there and f of x there too. Sorry, shorthand. So then the last one is that these two must converge with one another. The limit as x approaches c of f of x must equal f of c. So it can't just be like, hey, my limit exists. Hooray, everything's continuous. No, it could be something like this. That'd be a situation where the limit would exist from the left and the right, but the function would not be defined there. This would be a place where the function is defined. It's defined at that y value. Um, it does exist, but those two don't equal each other and therefore that it's not a continuous function. So when you're talking piecewise, we're keeping in mind all three parts of this. So let's check it out. On this first one, is x defined at c? So that equal to right there means that if I plug in 3, it's going to exist on this part of the piecewise, x minus 1. So it does, it is defined there. Does the limit of x as x approaches 3 exist? Well, you're going to check the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit. If you recall, the less than corresponded to a left-hand limit. The greater than corresponded to a right-hand limit, just based on the behavior. 
If it only exists to the right, and it can only come from the right. If it only exists to the left, less than, it can only come from the left. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is basically saying use this part of the piecewise. And we're asking the question, does it from the left equal the one from the right? Which is the 3x minus 7. There are no domain issues. So you can plug limits straight in when there are no domain issues. 3 minus 1, does that equal 3 times 3 minus 7? 2 on the left, 9 minus 7. 2 equals 2. All right, it checks these two boxes right away. And really, it checks the third one as well, because f of c is when we plug it in from the left, because it's the equal to part for that limit. So we've shown kind of that, hey, the limit from the left equals the limit from the right. At 3, it exists, and it just so happens to equal 2. It's continuous everywhere. There's no domain issue here. There's no continuity issue here. So you'd say number 5, continuous everywhere. Now this actually isn't going to work for number 6. Because even though number 6 has an equal to, meaning that it, the function is defined at that spot, the limit from the left of t approaches 0 is using this one right here, because it's less than. The top one, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right, is t squared. 0 minus 2 is never going to equal 0 squared. The limit from the left did not equal the limit from the right. They're, they're basically going to two different values. One's going to negative 2. The other is going to 0. Um, yeah, those are converging to different spots. So not only is it discontinuous, but it's non-removably discontinuous when, it, when the limit from the left does not equal the limit from the right. So it's non-removably discontinuous at t equals 0. All right, last one for this video because we are approaching 18 minutes. Yikes. Sorry, the, the, the explanation at the beginning was a little bit bloated. I think that's what made this what made it a little bit too lengthy. Anyway, here's number seven. <clears throat> We've got a parabolic function, a parabola, that basically exists everywhere but three. And then you got a function below that that just is sort of a point at y equals seven. So you can think about this graphically. We got a parabola, it's gonna be centered on one Z, yeah, 1, 0, because this factors to x minus 1 squared. And it just does this. Over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, over 2, up 4. So this is where it doesn't exist. At x equals 1, 2, 3, it's a whole. It's a whole at y equals 4. So it's actually up here at 7. So the limit from the left equals 4. The limit from the right equals 4. But the function is defined at 7, at y equals 7. So you would say the limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x equals 4. The limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x is 4. But then the function at 3 actually equals 7. So the conflict between the limit and the function's definition at that point 
means that it is discontinuous there. But as you can notice, this isn't a non-removable discontinuity. It's removable. It's just a hole in the graph with a point randomly spotted at a different place. So that can be kind of tricky. All right, I got to stop this video. 20 minutes is pushing it. Hope it was helpful. I'll be back for part two here in a bit.